Hi, I'm Hillary, and I'm a trail runner. What does that mean? It means I love to run along trails, sometimes for hours on end, and immerse myself in nature. Unlike our road running counterparts, we slow down to soak up the view, hike the uphills, and eat plenty of snacks along the way. Before hitting the trails, like any runner, we start by putting on our shoes on our, and our exercise gear. But considering we like to go a little further afield, there are a few extra things we need. A running vest with soft flasks filled with water and electrolytes, a hat, gloves, waterproof layer, on today's like today, an extra thermal, and in summer, a snake a first aid kit with the all-important snake bandage. Now we are ready to head out into the unknown and into the elements, ready to meander along the network of hiking trails that intersect this vast continent, taking us along exposed alpine ridge lines and down into cool, temperate fern-filled gullies and into places seldom seen by humans. In these places, we are immersed in a new world, the distinct piercing shriek of a yellow-tailed black cockatoo, the rustling of undergrowth as we startle a wallaby, the smell of honey in a eucalypt, and the tingling sensation of wind passing through our sweaty brow. In these places, we are immersed in the smells and sounds of nature. We are immersed in a new world far removed from the hard surfaces, echoes, and distractions of our built environment. This world was once our only world. Forests that stretch for days, home to an array of weird and wonderful native species, cared for by the indigenous people of this continent for millennia. Experiencing these places leads to connection, and connection leads to love. I love these places, and along with a lot of other trail runners, I want to help protect them. Our organisation for Wild Places seeks to do just this. We harness the energy and drive of the trail and ultra running community to protect wild places under threat. Since 2020, we have been giving back to the places that have given us so much through raising awareness, funds, and growing a community of trail custodians. We call this sports activism, and we think it's going to help change the world. The etymology of the word activism comes from the 1920s when it was used in the political sense of advocating energetic action. Running to protect a wild place under threat is just this a natural and inclusive way of combining energy, activism, and advocacy. The concept of sports activism is somewhat new to me. However, connection to nature has always been a key part of what brings me joy, comfort, and adventure since childhood. I grew up surrounded by, by nature on our family farm in northwestern Victoria. Surrounded by paddocks that stretched to the horizon, gnarly, bulbous, red river gums, which were perfect for climbing, and with enough space for me to roam without fear or company. I grew up feeling at home amongst the gum trees, the vast Milky Way, and with, enough, with a sense of freedom that comes from feeling small and insignificant within a vast landscape. But when looking out across the family farm these days, I no longer feel encompassed by nature. With life experience, I've realised but the bushland that I see is just the last remnant bushland that is following the creeks and rivers. In my home state of Victoria, 70% of land has been cleared since colonisation. Nature has become fragmented. It follows the rivers and vegetation corridors, which have now become highways for itchy-footed animals that must roam to seek food, to find a mate and to migrate. Sadly, very few remnant forests remain on this continent, and along with our crew of trail custodians, for wild places is fighting to protect what remains. The Pilliga is one of these last remaining areas of remnant forest. Situated in north central New South Wales, it could be mistaken by any one of us as just another bit of bush. On my first visit to the Pilliga, I was driving north along the Newell Highway towards the town of Narrabri. After leaving the outskirts of Coonabara Bran, I was soon surrounded by nothing but scrub. Bush, trees, and a long bitumen road stretched out in front of me for as far as the eye could see. I too misunderstood this typical bit of Australian bush as unassuming until I had the opportunity to learn more about the delicate layers of the, this, this landscape. What we see on the surface is quintessential scrubby Australian bush. Wiry eucalypts, prickly, impenetrable shrubs, 
interlinked by spider webs and an array of native grasses, creating a layered landscape home to an array of native flora and fauna. Ephemeral creeks intersect the understory and with them bring life for the creatures that live in this usually arid environment. And when the rains come, so do the wildflowers, insects, birds, and fresh shoots of grass for kangaroos to nibble on. Underneath this rugged terrain and hundreds of metres of ancient sandstone lies the Great Artesian Basin. This underground reservoir is the provider of main, most of the fresh water in Australia and covers one-fifth of our enormous continent. The Pilliga sits on the bottom edge of the Great Artesian Basin and is one of the few recharge zones. The rain that falls on the Pilliga leaches into the soil and is pulled down by the tree roots into the Surat Basin hundreds of metres below. This complex and vital system of aquifers and recharge and discharge zones creates a unique hydraulic pressure system that ensures even the remotest townships of the Northern Territory and Queensland have a year-round water supply, which is especially important during years of drought. Disrupting this system would not only wreak havoc on the Pilliga Forest, but the world's largest and deepest artesian basin. But there is yet another layer to this landscape that I cannot see. It is the millennia of Indigenous history and culture that is embedded into this ancient landscape and the connection to language, law and culture that the Gomorrah have people have with this landscape. <laughs> there are many artefacts throughout the forest. Some we can see on the side of the trail. Others are deep in the belly of the forest on the walls of ancient sandstone caves. I've only explored the tiniest fraction of this vast forest and what I've seen has taken my breath away. From the incredible seasonal changes to the playful rocky escarpments, many of these trails have stopped me in my tracks as I try to catch my breath. This enormous forest is home to 1,250 native plant species and 375 animal species, of which 65 are currently threatened. Sadly, this entire forest is itself under threat from coal seam gas extraction. This forest, which was logged for 100 years for native timber, has for decades been allowed to lie dormant, free from exploitation and extraction. But in our expanding global community, the vast reserves of gas which lie deep below this ancient sandstone are now seen as valuable and necessary resources and are currently being extracted through the extremely harmful and fragmenting process of fracking. At For Wild Places, we felt compelled to share the stories and the incredible work of the communities that have been fighting to protect this ecologically and culturally significant landscape for decades. So we did what we do best. We got our shoes on and we got out there for a run. In 2022, the Pilliga Ultra came to life. Individuals from across the country drove for hours to one tiny corner of the Pilliga Forest. In the months leading up to the event, participants trained and fundraised, asking friends and family, colleagues and running buddies to donate to the campaign and to support them as they went out of their comfort zone to give voice to a place that cannot speak for itself. On an unseasonably wet March morning, runners set off just after dawn filled with a genuine sense of excitement that, it comes, that comes with exploring somewhere new for the first time. As well as meeting some of the locals, such as wallabies, grass parrots, giant orb spiders and the occasional emu, they bonded with each other on the trails as they shared in the beauty of the forest and questioned how this incredible landscape could be under threat from the yet more fossil fuel extraction. A cacophony of cowbells, kookaburras, cheers and whoops greeted runners at the finish line as we all celebrated their incredible personal accomplishment. Many of the people that took to the trail that day are just like you all here. They're curious, adventurous and eager to make this world a better place. As a collective, the 120 runners that participated raised an astounding $100,000 to support this community and to protect the, the Pilliga against coal seam gas. We came together as a community to support a community to conserve something that we collectively cherish. Some of the people participating had driven for hours from the northern rivers as they'd spent the past several weeks hauling sandbags, protecting homes and helping others during the devastating floods. 
surely driving for hours to run an ultra marathon sounds like an unnecessary strain on every already tired, emotionally depleted and overwhelmed people. But their Pilliga experience had the opposite effect. Runners left feeling uplifted by the life of the forest and the stories of the people who had been fighting to protect it for decades. Feelings of hopelessness and overwhelmed were replaced with connection, optimism and activism. Spending time on trails, whether it be during a race, on a weekend or whatever time of the week you can find to fit it in, is a type of moving meditation that nourishes our mind, body and spirit and connects us back to country. When we feel at ease in a moment, we are more receptive to love. We are more likely to appreciate a small, colourful fungi or a kind gesture from a stranger or feel gratitude for the people and places around us. Love fills us with passion, excitement and a desire to do good. And right now, our wild places desperately need our help. Regardless of where I've roamed in my very short three years of being a trail runner, I now feel intrinsically connected to these places. Whether it be the tall trees of Tekina or the soft sandy shores of Malakuta, the humid Bondan and rainforests of Mount Kugel or the box iron bark forests of the Piliga, I now feel it is in my nature to protect them. The more time I spend outdoors, the more I'm reminded that it is nature that makes us human and as humans, we exist in nature. We must not forget or underestimate this symbiotic relationship as we look forward towards an uncertain future, it is connection and love that will power our movement. Together, we can embrace our true, true human spirit and welcome our future as wild place custodians so that together, people and places can not only survive, but thrive. Thank you.